works this way. And follow very closely. A special person has been which has been designated by each honoree will present the Hall of Famer to us with some brief remarks. Brief remarks. <laughs> the inductee is then invited to respond briefly. <laughs> As the presenter is speaking, your attention is drawn to both sides of the room where we think we have a great slideshow for you to view as each of the honoree that comes up tonight. Our honorees will receive a plaque, that I, that same plaque that's in the uh, other room, that will be theirs. It's a replica of the plaque that we said will be uh, on display at the community uh, center. They'll receive the certificate from the uh, individuals who were up here earlier, the City of Pacifica, Assembly McMullen, and State Senator uh, uh, Jackie Spear. They also receive their own personal membership card as an inductee into the Pacific Rest Sports Hall of Fame. Now, this is unique because I said only 88 people now will be carrying these. So if you're a card carrying member, you are a good, good club. Uh, yeah, Master of Ceremonies is a person, if you have had a child attend one of the Jefferson Union High School District schools, you know this gentleman, or at least you've heard his name. Mike Crilly has been the superintendent of the Jefferson Union High School District for the past 10 years. Four high schools and one continuing high school make up the school district. Mike oversees a student population of 5,500, comprising the cities of Daly City, Coma, Brisbane, and of course, Pacifica. Now Mike is no stranger to our annual Sports Hall of Fame by dinner as he has been here several years to come and welcome the inductees into the uh, program. And of course, Mike's no stranger to Pacifica. He was hired as an English teacher in 1973 at Oceana. He later served as vice principal, and then in 1988, he was selected principal of the school. And now I just learned tonight, he was the first wrestling coach. Can you? I always thought Bill Gray was that wrestling coach, but now I know who taught Bill Gray how to be a wrestling coach now. He also worked at Westmore High School as principal on two different occasions. Now, being an educator, Mike is a very good disciplinarian. So controlling tonight's program should be an easy task for him. If our speakers get a little bit out of control in their allotted time, he might just have to enforce some heavy discipline. Will you please join me in welcoming our Master of Ceremonies, Mike Crilly. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome, and it's really a delight for me to be here tonight to MC this program. Um, I think that Pacifica is really unique, and as uh, Sue DeGree said earlier, it, it's very unique. And when you look up and down the peninsula, there's not another city that comes together each year, as Pacifica does, to honor its athletes, its coaches, former athletes, former coaches, and those who have supported athletics and sport through the years. You look at the county, and we have the San Mateo County Hall of Fame, Sports Hall of Fame, every year. You look at Daly City, next door to, uh, to Pacifica, a city of 100,000 people. Just started, only a couple of years ago, the Sports Hall of Fame. And of course, they they only offer the program and honor the, the awardees every two years. And I'm not quite sure why. It, it may be that it's so much work to put on a program like this, as Horace knows. Maybe it's the athletes. I don't think that that's the issue. I think it's just that Pacifica really, truly values sport, what it provides for young people, and that the city and its community have taken the time to recognize those folks that have spent time as coaches with youth over the years and to recognize those individuals who in their youth were marvelous athletes and in fact continue to be great athletes. So it really is special and our honorees this evening are indeed special to be recognized by their community. Now Horace made a comment a little bit earlier about wrestling, and I, I have to tell you the truth. I, I have no credentials to do this tonight as MC, other than maybe my initials. But you know, I'm, 
I'm not an athlete. I obviously wasn't a great coach. I was a coach for one year, and this is the true story. As a brand new teacher at Oceana High School, um, I think wrestling had fallen on hard times. I'm not quite sure who was the wrestling coach before. It might have been Ed Larios. He's going to go into the San Mateo County Sports Hall of Fame with Bud Bresnahan here. And I guess Ed had decided not to coach the next year. I think the uh, probably the best wrestlers had graduated, and it was going to be a drought time at Oceana. So there was no coach. Bill Gray was not heard of at that point in time. And the principal, Joe Conway, uh, came up to me one afternoon as I was leaving school, and he says, you know about wrestling, don't you? I said, well, I've seen it on television. You know? <laughs> he says, well, you know about wrestling. You're a new teacher, aren't you? I said, yeah. He says, you like your job, don't you? I said, yeah. Well, you're our new wrestling coach. So I became the wrestling coach. And uh, it was a, a, a real learning experience for me, obviously. And I had a wonderful assistant, Vern Long, who was from San Francisco State and knew everything there was about wrestling. So it was a decent season. We didn't really win much, um, but it was a decent season. And then at the end of this season, it was made known to me that Bill Gray was going to become the wrestling coach the next year. And I'm not quite sure why he took it on, just to, maybe to relieve the misery that the team had gone through, or you know, he saw the future in wrestling. So I, I always like to kid Bill and tell him that uh, that I was the foundation for that wrestling program that led him to, I think, 13 NPL uh, championships and a number of state wrestling champions over the years. So if I have a credential to do this tonight, that's it. <laughs> and actually, one of the wrestlers is out here at the table. I can't believe it. Well, you didn't come here to hear me. Uh, you came here to honor some wonderful individuals tonight. And I think we ought to move right to that right away. To, uh, to lead off our program tonight is a presenter um, who's a member of the Pacifica Sports Hall of Fame. Reputation, it wasn't exactly all correct. <laughs> and so I was looking to see all of the information and all the memories that came flooding through, and this is what it came up with. Maggie was a visionary. She is one of the hardest working people I have ever known. And I have learned some wonderful things from Maggie. And she's been a role model in a couple of ways that I've never told her about. One of them was delegation. I learned to delegate from Maggie. And what she meant by my water sport is that I got in the water and she didn't. <laughs> Maggie had a dream of a swim team and coaching. And so she went to the very best. She went to Charlie Sadler, who was then you probably know the Olympic coach, Fran Curtis. And she found out everything there was to know about it, and she went to our then director, Elder Locker, and she got approval. And then she delegated. She picked three people to get in the water. And one was Marty Miller, who was the wife of Don Miller, city councilman. And she picked Dorothy Feige, wife of then Carl Feige, city councilman, and I believe mayor at the time. And then I got in the water, and our first student was Skip Mason, son of Connie and George Mason, city councilman. And that's when I learned lesson number two. When you want to get something done from city officials or county officials, and there's five members sitting there, you go for three votes, and Maggie had them. So whatever she wanted for the pool, what are they gonna say? They had their wives and their kid working with her, they couldn't say no, so funding came for the Pacifica Sea Lions. And it was very easy because Maggie taught me how to, and she taught all of us, how to be very diplomatic with city officials, county officials, and how to get their votes. You put them to work. Mm -hmm. I have to ask Maggie a question at this time because I found out part of it. Maggie never got in the water. Maggie delegated, told us what to do. Maggie, can you swim? <laughs> I found out tonight she floats. Uh, close. Because of Maggie, though, she got many of the parents to go along and 
to work and to form the team and for one year she worked diligently trying to get this going and she did and then she got the funding and we used to be there at six o'clock in the morning with our children working out and we were there six o'clock at night I know I drove 24 miles a day never left but no more going back and forth to that pool with the kids but it was a wonderful experience and my eldest son got to be a lifeguard my middle son became a Navy SEAL and my youngest son who was crippled for five years is walking without any hint of anything and he was supposed to he became a medical miracle all because of her diligence in getting that pool and the work that went into it. Her children had, one of her boys had surgery also, so this became a very motivational thing. Um, I was told I had to keep this to swimming, but I would be very remiss if I didn't say something else. First of all, Maggie didn't just start things. She worked hard in making sure there was funding for all these programs also. And I have a very wonderful picture in my mind of Maggie armpit deep in cotton candy because she made more cotton candy to sell at carnivals to raise funds to keep those pools going and to keep the sports programs going that she helped start. There were many, many programs other than swimming that Maggie was responsible for in the city of Pacifica. And many of us sitting in this room have children or themselves have experienced some of these programs. And if it wasn't like Maggie and her diligence and her vision and hard work, and we worked in those days, believe it or not, we just didn't go to meetings she worked extremely hard and she got people to work with her. She had a wonderful way about making people do things whether you wanted to or not. And we did them and we were proud to do them because we knew there was going to be a very good result at the end. And the city of Pacifica and the people of Pacifica owe oh Maggie a wonderful big thank you. And I'm so pleased to recognize what she has done for the city and are honoring her tonight. It's a deep pleasure for me to bring forth Maggie Mosley Ramirez. Thank you, Sheila. Um, we've been friends for so long, we, we don't even remember how long. And worked in many, many things together. And what she says is right, I love volunteers. <laughs> and I love the kinds of things that we've been able to do in Pacifica with the help of volunteers. And by the way, we were all volunteers on the sea lines. Um, Sheila has never let me down. She gave a wonderful speech and I got a little teary over the whole idea. Except she had to tell you I didn't, couldn't swim. <laughs> and that was the promise I made the kids make for me. Don't throw your coach in when you win. <laughs> I'd like to thank Bill Drake for his, all his support over the years in all of the efforts that I got into. Um, I'd like to thank the photographer for this great picture of me. His name is Grady Tolan, and I think somebody ought to recognize him. I was very impressed. Um, before the, the City of Pacifica could budget for our department, the Park, Beach, and Recreation de Department, I was appointed to the commission and initiated some activities. Uh, we all got out and did volunteered in, in activities we had some experience in, activities we might enjoy, and brought on a, a drama club and uh, volleyball and that sort of thing. The late Eldred Locker, who was the director and a wonderful first director of PBNR, um, was the person I asked to allow me to start forming a competitive swim team for the city of Pacifica because we now had a pool at Terra Nova. And that was exciting to get the pool. <laughs> I'd been driving my own children to various San Francisco pools, by the way. I have three children, they swam at three different pools because they had three different styles. Charlie Sava was one of the teachers who was taking care of my kids and working with them. And he was a generous man. He not only was an Olympic coach of great renown, but a very nice person who actually came down and saw the sea lines and gave them some help. I was helped also by a man named Carlos, who was the swim coach at McLaren Pool, and a generous, wonderful human being. 
um, the San Francisco State coach, and I was I had gone to San Francisco State at this time. I was taking a class here and there. I went to him and asked him too, and he said, "Fine, you know, I'll teach you what this is about." So the person who couldn't swim decided to coach. <laughs> then I asked Marty Miller, and I asked Marty because he had been a swimmer with the Billy Rose Aqua Bake, which was at Treasure Island and of great fame. Um, I asked Dorothy Feige because she had been a distance swimmer. And these two women were wonderful in volunteering and coming in. Uh, the Pacifica Sea Lions were born at that time. The name came from my house. <laughs> And we were very proud of it. The team worked out very early in the morning. And I have to tell you, I never felt better in my life than when I got up at that hour and went out to meet the young people and all of the parents who volunteered. Did we lose then the first year? Yes, we did. <laughs> but we got better and better. And parents were helping us both to coach and to drive the kids all over the place. They still do that, I imagine. And I'm still very proud of the Sea Lions, which exists today. I coached only for the first year, and then Dick Burton came in. He was a, a paid person. Up until then, no one had been paid for this job. I loved the activity. I loved the young people. I always have. I got to work with them at the cable television channel 8, and one of them was there working a video camera tonight, and I'm thrilled to see him. <laughs> I need to thank some special people. Sheila, of course, uh, for all of her help, not only there, but when we had uh, oil spills and everything you could think of that Sheila and I got out and volunteered and I helped her and she helped me. She has my eternal thanks and friendship. The Starr family, Donna Starr, the Henderson family, and all the children that were on the early team. There were many other families who became involved, almost all the families of the kids who were on it, and my own family, some of whom are present tonight. Uh, I'm not going to make her stand up, but Vicki Mosley is here, and we have Vicki Reese now. And Vicki was very ill when we started this. She was the least of the problems. We, you know, two and three years old, we sent her to the bottom of the pool. And as a matter of fact, Rex Starr jumped on her once when she was down there to save her. <laughs> we were taking Red Cross courses. It's been a great experience. I am very honored, and I thank you all for this wonderful time tonight. Um, I feel very good about it and very good about Pacifica, and very good about the sea lions. Thank you. Our next uh, awardee is Wally Raposo. And our next presenter is a world-class runner himself. And at 77 years old, like Wally, Ray Piva is still setting records in ultra marathons. And for those of you who are not runners, uh, the ultra marathon is 31 miles long. Oh. Or longer. <laughs> 31 is enough for me. <laughs> Wally calls Ray his best friend, so it's only right Ray would be here this evening to induct into the Pacifica Sports Hall of Fame his friend and his running partner. So Ray, please come on up, share with us a few stories, a couple of miles about Wally. Okay, it's my pleasure to introduce Wally Reposo He's my best friend, and I really mean it, Wally. He's married to Lisa, who's not here tonight. Wally will tell you all about it when he comes up here, why she's not here. Wally was born and raised in Kauai, Hawaii. He married Lisa on January 15, 1950, in Chicago, Illinois. They have two children and six grandchildren. They celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary on July 15, 2000, in Bozeman, Montana, doing a run and shoot biathlon. How many other couples have you heard <laughs> running and shooting on their wedding anniversary? But oh. well, that's what happened. They moved to Pacifica in 1958, and they lived here ever since. I met Wally and Lisi about 20 years ago, when we were running under the supervision of a track coach trying to improve our running. We have become the very best friends. 
running a gym in his garage. For 25 cents, you could train for the week. So Dan began lifting under Knott Meyer's tutoring. A former Olympic lifter, collegiate discus throw champion, Dan has traveled, I think, the longest to be here this evening, all the way from Salt Lake City to be here tonight with us. Please help me welcome Dan John, one of Dick and Joy Lottmeyer's former students. Thank you very much. Uh, I had odd dreams almost 30 years ago today. It's been 30 years since I first met Dick and Joy. I just graduated from South City High, and I had this idea of getting, winning an Olympic, uh, uh, winning a college scholarship. I weighed a whopping 162 pounds, and I wanted to be a discus thrower when I grew up. When I first met Dick, we met at an old sports palace weightlifting meet, and, I, and he said, come to my gym. And I got this idea of a room just like this, <laughs> filled with platforms. <laughs> Funny thing is, four months later, I weighed 202 pounds. I put on 40 pounds in four months, mostly my neck and legs. And then one year later, I, I got a full ride scholarship to Utah State University. It's the finest discus throwing school in America. And uh, when I first heard about tonight, I immediately made plans for this evening. I had to be here. Uh, when you go back into the late 1960s and early 1970s, if you go to a magazine called Strength and Health, you'll find these results in there from Pacifica, California. And if you want results, you got to call 790 Moana Way. Top of the hill there. And Dick and Dick's sons and Joy, a scorekeeper, I think every weightlifting meet in the world ever uh, were at every meet. My favorite image of Joy, what you'd have to do to understand our gym is take all of you and put you at one table. And that would give you an idea of how the size of the gym was. <laughs> Joy would come home and she would start to walk into the gym and go, The smell of nine adolescent weightlifters would not get down. We thought it was okay. I've always wanted to thank the Notmeyer boys for sharing their parents with me. Uh, there's not a, uh, it, it's true, I, I doubt there's an Olympic lifter in America who doesn't owe something to Dick and Joy. Uh, 84 Olympics, they were there doing the work asked by the Olympic Committee. Every meet you'd go to, they would be there. Dick would get there far before the meet would start, Dick and Joy, and leave far after. You know, tonight we gather here, and uh, you know, uh, just a month ago, I was uh, given a position as a, a full-time professor. Uh, and uh, it's, that's only one of my two careers. And I, I thought back about the, the long road to get where I'm at. And I hate to say it, but no Dick, no Joy, no career for me. Yeah. I think I'd ended up as a cop in South City which is a fine career, but a long ways from where I'm at today. Um, what amazed me when I thought about this story today is that 30 years ago, Dick was my age. <laughs> and I still continue to throw the discus, I still continue to weigh him, and now I, I work with a group of young men and they asked me, the parents would say, well, what do you charge? <laughs> well, I owe, my friends, <laughs> I owe a great debt to these next two nominees who, like many people in this room, Eric and a number of others who are at this, I hope they'll be thanked in a few moments, and a lot of other people you've never met, we owe a great debt to these two people. They were our parents, they were our friends, they were our coaches, and they were there when things went bad, and they were there also when things went well. It is my great honor to welcome and induct my good friends Dick and Joy Nutter. Pacifica Barbell Club for 25 years. 
was definitely a nonprofit organization. <laughs> uh, 20 years, we were very active in the Pacific Association of Weightlifting, and we had some, quite a bit of success with our young athletes. We had about 100 young boys come through our gym over a period of 20 years and trained with us. Uh, and we did have a lot of success. We had a young, young man over here, Eric Suber, who made the junior world team about 1977 and went, got a trip to Greece and he was uh, a member of one of 10 from the United States that went to Greece with a junior world team and he was the only boy from the West Coast from our little gym. So we were pretty proud of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it, it's been a lot of fun. We had a great time with the boys, uh, great camaraderie. And probably the biggest thing was years later, a young man would come up to me and say, Dick, you might not remember me, but I trained at your place. And you kept me off of drugs and you kept me straight. And I never got into drinking or stealing. And that was probably the best thing that anybody could say. Because I like to think that we we did some good with some of these young men. So thank you. Oh, one thing I like to say about Horace Henshaw. <laughs> over that 20 years, Horace would come up to our gym about four or five times a year and take pictures of the boys that are lifting in meets and write an article for the Pacifica Tribune. And that was a big shot in the arm for the boys. And they really appreciated it. And I really appreciated it for us and you all. So thank you very much. I wasn't aware that I was supposed to say anything. <laughs> but I'm very thankful for all the people who helped us with our family, our, our big family who lifted in our extended family who is still involved with us and all our friends. I really don't know how to tell you how much I appreciate everything they've done. I love everybody and thank you so much. This is quite an honor. Thank you. Presenting our last inductee tonight is Jim Soden. And our last inductee is Bob Fisher. Jim was a championship basketball coach at Terranova High School, guiding many teams over the years to league titles. And Jim and our next inductee have coached together over many years. Jim was inducted into the Pacifica Sports Hall of Fame several years ago, actually more than 10 years ago, 1991, I believe. Although he's retired from coaching, he's still a legacy at Terranova High School, and he's still teaching at Terranova High School. As we welcome our sixth inductee into the class of 2004 Pacifica Sports Hall of Fame, I'll ask Jim to come to the microphone and introduce Bob Fisher. <laughs> I came uh, to Terranova in, in the fall of 1966. Uh, coach Fisher was the uh, football coach, athletic director, track assistant track. I knew I was dealing with a person who we all learn in our teacher education was a true professional. He was a professional coach, <laughs> he was a professional teacher, and uh, he really helped me in the sense that he showed me the ropes. He took it upon himself uh, to uh, help me with uh, PE classes uh, that I had, that I uh, taught as well as other uh, other endeavors. Um, I was sitting back and looking at Coach Fisher. Uh, I noticed a couple things uh, that uh, were really cool. One thing I really was impressed with him from the get from day one was actually the gold blazers. <laughs> and I said, you know, for a farm atmosphere, Pacifica was still in those days. Uh, this was really impressive. Um, and uh, do you still, I don't know if you still have that bla those blazers. They're, uh, uh, they're probably in some cabinet behind the gym there. Um, for you tonight, certainly uh, 
deserve our admiration and a warm round of applause. One more time. Before I re relinquish the mic, I would like to uh, make a comment about this entire program. And I, I, I have to say that Pacifica is so very lucky um, because this program goes on each year, year in, year out, and it wouldn't be here but for a crew of folks whose names I'm not sure of, but I know one for sure, and that's Horace Henshaw. We didn't have Horace, we wouldn't have the Pacific Sports Hall of Fame. So thank you, Horace. Thank you, Mike. Hey, it's been a fun evening, Mike. Thank you very much for a fun and an educational training of us in your wrestling career. We now know what happened, so thank you very, very much for it. How about another round of applause for MC, our Master of Ceremony, Mike Crilly. Before we close tonight's program, I would like to invite you, if you are not already a member of the Pacifica Sports uh, Club, we'd like to uh, invite you to become a member. And we operate solely on membership, $15 per year as I do, so it's not very much. If you have more, more information on the back of your program, gives you some information about the club, so we certainly would uh, welcome you. Now, what we've all been waiting for, we want those prizes to go home. So I'm going to ask Mike uh, to help me with the drawing. And uh, Hazel, do we have the basket? Hazel Beck is going to be making her way up here. She's our coordinator for the, uh, for the raffle. And while she's doing that, I want to recognize some very special people. First, as I said, I certainly want to thank the, uh, the catering department here at the Grocer Hotel for a nice dinner. So thank you very much, you guys. And of course, you've seen an, a great PowerPoint presentation of our new inductees, and that's thanks to Harry Morrow for a very professional show. Thank you, Harry. And if Harry looks like he's about ready to fall asleep, he was up at 2 o'clock this morning welcoming in his 10th grandchild. So congratulations, Harry. And our appreciation to Carlton Yee, our audio vision technician who has donated the equipment and staff to help run the slideshow. Carlton, thank you very much. And his assistant, John. John, thank you. I also want to thank the Pacifica Tribune because without the Tribune, I don't think any of this would have been possible. The Tribune has supported sports program at Pacifica, as I said earlier, since Bill Drake was here to my many years ago. And without the Tribune's help and, and helping us put this on, it may not have existed. So I really help, I want to thank the Tribune for making it a success. Bill, that all starts with you. Thank you. Hey, so are you ready to go? Let's give Mike the, uh, the basket. Mike, reach down dick, uh, deep and pick out Marion Henshaw's number, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, the first prize is going to be a case of wine. The number is going to be 013, and if you have the ticket, come see Hazel, 990. There we go. Right there. Congratulations. You'll see Hazel after the show, and she'll give you the, uh, come over here and see her now, but, uh, but she'll give it to you to take home. And Hazel will be up here at the end of the program. The next prize, Hazel, is going to be for another a case of wine. Mm -hmm. The basket of wine. Okay, basket of wine. It's uh, 015113. <laughs> Sorry, Chuck. <laughs> 015113. Nobody has it? Going once? Going twice? Well, they're not as old as you are, so they, they've been having trouble seeing that number, right? One, one, zero, one, five, one, one, three. Alma? Nothing? Dick? Okay, going once, going twice. 
God. I think that goes to the uh, MC, right, uh, Mike? <laughs> okay, for, still for the basket of wine. 014496. Oh, hey, I'm trying to do my best. 014496. Oh, Nobody? Nobody's left. <laughs> Hey, Vince, how old is she? <laughs> uh, better check that ID. <laughs> Next one's going to be the DVD player. And the winning number is 014573. Five, seven, three. Oh, one, four. Or they're running that tra cross country uh, track. Uh, they're naked, you're right. 014573. Nobody's left. Oh, I saw this to the people out there. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, this is going once. What's the number again? Dick, I had the hearing problem, not you. 014573. Ray, very good, Ray. Do you share that with your best friend up here, Wally? Do I hear that? <laughs> okay, the next prize is going to be, I think it's a $25 or $50 gift certificate to Nick's Restaurant in Rockaway Beach in Pacifica. And even if you don't live in Pacifica, if you win, you can come on over. 014. Five, eight, three. Five, eight, three. Somebody tell Mike to mix them up, right? Mary? Mary Armstrong. It's Mike's, Mike's wife. Congratulations. Next one is going to be a gift certificate for C's candy. You getting his own film, Jeff? I am. Oh, great. What are you doing here? 014835. Chuck, sorry. Joe? Joe came all the way from Oregon just for the note miners there. 12 hour drive all the way down. Okay, the last one is going to be a 10% uh, off an alarm system, from, which is very nice of Musio uh, to, uh, to donate this. He's always been very supportive of the uh, program. So hopefully whoever wins this lives in Pacifica. 015121. Hi, Mary, I didn't see her. How you doing? <laughs> I saw your husband come in, but I didn't see you. Where's the dog? <laughs> 015-12. Buzz? We're going to start building lights again for Civic on Buzz's uh, money here. Well, you know, we've been given a capsule look into the lives of our Sports Hall of Fame inductees and their contribution to world sports. I want to thank Joy Notmeyer. Bob Fisher, Maggie Ramirez, and Mike Armstrong. Congratulations to the Fame Inductees. Wally, what did I say? Did I say Wally? I'm sorry, Wally. I thought you were already out running that race already. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Wally. Wally Rebozo. Incredible, Wally, incredible. Congratulations. Hey, we look forward to our awards dinner next year.
circle the date on your calendar. It's always the last Saturday of February. Put that down as we get home tonight. That's our program for the night. I hope you had a great time. Enjoy yourself. Thanks to everybody for coming. Drive safely, and we'll see you next year. I'm going to ask our awardees to stay around for a while because we need to take some pictures. But come on up and congratulate them. And thanks, everybody. See you next time. See you later, pal. Stay in shape.